Well, welcome everybody here. Um, excited to, to have everybody here and get a chance to talk about our our team a little bit, talk about our progress and our players most specifically, and then just kind of where we're at to get ready for the season. Uh, we're very excited uh, just with the group of kids that we've got, you know, going into year three of, of having the program full time here now. This is a year that we've been really excited uh, to get ready for. And um, as you saw with the interviews with our four captains a little while ago, I mean, those guys are the reason we're so excited. Um, you know, the past couple of years, we've played a lot of young players. We really made big investments into our young guys, playing freshmen, playing sophomores over the past two years. And when you do that, you take your lumps. But the benefit of it is those guys get a lot of experience. They get a lot of minutes. And through that, they gain a lot of confidence as they become juniors and they become, so become uh, seniors. And so uh, we're excited. Well, you know, we have two seniors this year. Um, we have four captains. This is the first time since I've been a head coach that I've felt comfortable enough to, you know, identify true team captains and uh, really felt great about those four players and uh, just their ability to lead us on and off the court. And because of that, uh, it's put us in a great, uh, great position this preseason. We're about halfway through our practice preseason right now as we're about two weeks away from you know, playing somebody else in an exhibition and then playing real games shortly after that. And so uh, I'm really pleased with, with where we are with our group. I just I think uh, that experience piece is, is really nice to have. And you can tell a huge difference just in uh, where we're at as a program. Things that we can do in a practice setting right now are light years ahead of where we would have been, you know, October 17th, the past couple years. And it's a credit to those guys because they They've been bought in. They've been working extremely hard. They've carried over. They've had a lot of carry over uh, mentally with the things that we've taught them over the past couple of years. And we've got a culture in place now. And I know everybody, everybody says that. That's a big buzzword they throw out there, especially when you first get a job. But it's a real thing. That culture is, is, is very important. And it's a crucial piece for us. It's a crucial piece at this level. And uh, I just think at this level, you, you win and you're successful with juniors and seniors. And so we're excited uh, that the bulk of our team is made up of, of, of really good junior and senior leadership. So. Who's looking to make the biggest impact on the team this year? You know, I, I, I'll answer that a couple ways. I think, you know, we're going to be led by Jordan Walker. You know, Jordan is one of three. Uh, first team all OVC returning players in the league this year. Jordan was about 17 points a game last year. He started every game for two years. Um, so he's, he's the guy who's not going to sneak up on anybody's scouting report. Uh, he's just had unbelievable uh, progress since he's been here, you know, going from his freshman year, being a backup player to some really good guards, being a shooter, and that was kind of his role into sophomore year playing more point guard and having to make more decisions and handling the ball um, until last year kind of you know merging those two things together to being a dominant scorer and a facilitator and that's hard when you've got to take on two identities like that and so it's exciting to see Jordan uh, you know emerge and make it all the way to his senior year because of the progress he's made the jumps that he's made year to year and we would expect him to do much of the same this year and I think he's got some really good pieces around him that will complement his game and it will showcase his ability to make them better as we go through it. So we'll be led by Jordan. Um, I, I always like to talk about guys that, that make a big jump from year to year and that may be a question that comes up, but I think uh, for us, the person who's made the biggest jump from our returners has been uh, Malik Riddle. Malik, as a freshman last year, saw limited minutes playing behind Jimon Henson and, and Davon Cooper and even Jordan at that position at times. And so he's really kind of forced our hand as a staff to just ask the question of how do we get him on the court? And that's a great problem to have when you've got really good depth. And so it'll kind of change the way we do some things from a coaching perspective, X's and O's on both sides of the ball. And that's a credit to him because he has worked so hard. Um, going through his freshman year, there was you could probably count on one hand how many times we broke the huddle at the end of practice that he did not grab a coach and get up extra work and try to get better at the end of that day. And um, he does that every day now. He comes early, he stays late. He had a fantastic summer where he invested eight weeks this summer in getting better, changing his body, getting stronger, 
learning multiple positions, and I think he's uh, he's going to make a noticeable jump this year, and it's going to have a big impact for us. I'll ask you this question. You talked about guys who made the jump. James Baker last year, second half of the season, was very, very good, as you well know. I mean, uh, how excited are you about what he can provide for you this year, and where does he take his game as he heads toward that next level? Yeah, we're you know James did. He had a really good sophomore season. You know he led the OVC in block shots as a sophomore, uh, especially for a league that has a lot of quality forwards as we've had the past couple years. That's a big statement. Um, I do believe James was the beneficiary of some poor defense on the perimeter at times that got him some block shot opportunities that maybe he won't get this year because I think we'll be better all around. Um, but I do think James James made some great progress last year and he's made a big jump. Uh, he's changed his body. You know, he's about 17 pounds heavier than what he was when he finished the season last year. Um, his confidence is really growing. Uh, he ended up finishing the year shooting the ball well from the perimeter and then proving that he could score the ball inside as well. And so developing both of those areas uh, because his role will change. You know, he will become more of a, a scoring threat for us. Um, we're still going to need him to maintain his defensive efficiency as he did last year. And then we expect him to improve his rebounding on both sides of the ball because with his length, his athleticism, uh, his anticipation, I think he's got a chance to be an elite rebounder. So you couple those things, those three things together, you've got a really good player. And so we're excited about James. And again, it's, it's, a, it's a testament to him. Uh, he's played a lot as a freshman and a sophomore. He's battle tested. And so now it's a great opportunity for him to be an upperclassman and be a veteran guy. You hear coaches sometimes saying that, you know, they can't do all the coaching. It needs to be guys on the court that are, you know, coaches and leaders that are, are helping out. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you've kind of got that now with some of the guys you were talking about. We do. I think that's that's really important. Um, and a lot of coaches say it. I don't know who's credited for saying it first, but a player-led team's a lot better than a coach-led team. And that's very true. Um, and that's where we're at, you know, and I think the four guys you got a chance to interview earlier, those four captains um, and some other guys on our team, Davon Cooper um, as well, those guys have really done a great job of, of captaining our team. You know, we tell everybody it's not just having a C on your chest and, and you know, being identified as a captain, that's not enough. There's, there's a meaning that comes with it. Uh, there's a role that comes with it. There's a certain level of uncomfortable that comes with it because you are going to be the standard each and every day um, and you are going to fall short of our standards at times and so you've got to be um, the guides that everyone can look at on how to respond to adversity how to do things the right way and uh, it's it's it makes it my job a lot more fun when we come in every day and I don't worry about coaching attitude and effort uh, you know I'm, I'm proud to say our guys they really bring it every day uh, we talk about our number one goal as a program every day is to just get better. That's it. That's all we talk about doing is what are we doing to get better? What impacts our ability to get better? And um, our leadership from, from the player's side of it has really allowed us to do that. Is the OVC more open this year? You know, I would think so. Um, you know, we lost a lot of good players in this league. I mean, you had two first-round draft picks. and. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we have three first-team all-conference returning players in the league with, with Jordan, Nick Mazinski, and Terry Taylor. Um, outside of that, we do have some other good returning players in the league, but we'll have a lot of new faces. You know, I think uh, there was a lot of seniors in our league last year that were, they were as good as anybody in college basketball. And uh, I think those top four teams, the way they finished last year, they proved that. And again, what I said, you win with juniors and seniors at this level. Those teams did that. Um, so to answer your question, I, yeah, it should be a little bit more wide open. I, I don't know if wide open is the answer or just a little unknown. Um, I can tell you some of those teams that I don't know who their players are uh, or I don't know their lineup of players that they've got. I know their coaches, and so I know they're going to be really good. Um, so I do think it's going to be a super competitive league, and I think you're going to have some of the teams that were – towards the bottom last year, or maybe the middle of the pack, are going to make a jump. Hope that we're going to be one of those teams as well. Preston, you said you really like the character of this team. Uh, guys with the right attitude, talk about that. You know, that's important for me. I'm, I'm not a big raw, raw guy. I, I like to have fun with the guys. That's important that I enjoy the group of kids that I'm around. And this is a group I'm really excited to come and, and get better with every day. 
uh, you know, we start practice every day with some film oftentimes and, uh, and then catching up on some personal things, whether we're talking about, you know, my football team beating somebody else's football team or whatever. And so it makes it a lot better, you know, when, when you're coming in and you've got kids that just they understand that they understand what fun is, okay? And I think uh, fun is when you're challenging yourself and pushing yourself to get better every day. And the only way you do that is you, you create some adversity and you do things that are hard. And uh, they've got the right approach about that. And it all goes back to their character uh, that you said there, David. I think that's where it starts. You've got to have kids that, that, uh, that, that are here for the right reasons. And that's where it started for us in the recruiting process for all of these guys. And so um, we're, we're really pleased in that area. Would you say you're more excited about this team than any you've had? Because these are your guys now. Yeah. These are yeah, I would say yes, I am. I'm a little more excited. Uh, I, I hate that term, your guys. I really do, because if you play for me, you're going to be my guy. I don't care if you play for me for two games or, or, or 200 games. It doesn't matter. These guys, I sat in their living rooms and recruited them and told them what it was going to be. And, I, and, and as a staff, we dug in, and we really found out what we were getting with each kid. And we made decisions to bring them here based on, on variables that were far beyond their ability to score baskets. So for that, that leads to my excitement because I know each kid, uh, there's a certain level of trust with each one of them of what they're going to give us each day and what we're going to get each night when we tip it up and play with them. So uh, I'm really excited about this group. Four captains sitting up there earlier. One guy on the end has never wore more in state jersey before. I mean, what's that say about him, uh, about Juice, about mm -hmm. Justin, and, and uh, what do you think he brings to your team? That's that's something different that you've had at that point guard position, a true point guard position. Yeah, he. I tell you what, let's, let's talk about that captain piece. You know, um, a lot of people don't understand it. When, when you sit out, okay, when you transfer and you have to sit out, that's hard. That's a difficult thing to do. It's different than having an injury and red shirting. Obviously, you can't practice, you can't play because of that. So when you transfer and you set out, and you're a kid who really loves the game, which for us in recruiting, that's where it starts. My first conversation with a kid in recruiting is an interrogation as to how much you love the game of basketball. Okay, And Juice is a guy that loves the game. And so when you take that part away from them for a year to where they can't compete in games, there are no measurables for him. There are no statistics to evaluate yourself on every day. It's hard. It's a hard thing. And I'll say this, last year, Juice was our most competitive and most consistent player every day. Every day. And he did not log a minute for us, as you said. And there's a lot to be said about that. And so uh, we knew what we were getting. When, uh, when we, after we had Juice here for a couple months and a few practices, and we knew what we were going to be getting going into this season, and he's been all that and more. Uh, from, a, from a position standpoint, from a playing standpoint, um, I mean, he is a real floor general, and so he is lightning quick. He is, he is strong. He's an absolute bully defender. And so our ability to increase our aggressiveness defensively this year, which is something we're really going to do, starts with him. Um, he makes guys better. At the end of the day, he impacts the game and he makes guys better. Uh, he's going to shoot it just enough from the perimeter, uh, but he's extremely intelligent. He keeps our team organized. He keeps young guys calm, um, and he, he gets us into the spots to where we need to be. And he's ultra coachable. You know, that's at the end of the day, he gets better every day because he wants to, and he takes great coaching, and he and he brings a great attitude and effort. And so uh, that's why he's, he represents us as a captain, having not played a minute here at Morehead State. Preston, it's got to be exciting for you going into this season, knowing that you have a potential player of the year on the roster. I mean, Jordan is a kid that could, could do that for you. He is, you know, and, and, and Jordan knows this as well. We've got to win in order to do that. They don't give you player of the year in any league unless you're finishing in the, at the top. And so that's a goal of, of our team. You know, it's a destination we'd like to get to. And a result of that would be having Jordan in that conversation. That's something we'd like for him to have uh, once we get through our 31 games and, and get into, into the tournament play. 
Uh, but it is. It's exciting to know that you've got a player like him. And again, we, we say it all the time. Um, you know, he and Jimon are the cornerstone of this basketball program. I took over during their freshman year. And when I hired my staff, when I got the job full time, I told those guys, we are going to recruit guys like these two. And that's what we're going to do. And, and they're going to they're going to act like these guys. They're going to work like these guys and they're going to be like them. And, and that's a great kind of group kids that we've got. And um, it's a credit to both of those guys. But I would you know, we we're going to send those two out their senior year. They're going to have a good season and Jordan is going to have a great in individual season. I'll ask you about your Pope situation. Obviously, the rebounding wasn't where you wanted it to be last year. Yeah. We, you know, we talked about James here earlier, who's obviously going to help you on that. But outside of that, uh, who else needs to step up in that area for you guys to do well? Sure. Well, all of us, you know, it's 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 by committee. Everybody's responsible for rebounding, and so uh, we addressed that early last year. As that was a uh, in recruiting, that was a big part of what we wanted to do. We wanted to get bigger at every position, and so we were able to do that. And, um, you know, the two guys that are going to play the most inside for us this year are two new guys. And so, you know, there's a little unknown with them because they have not played for us. Uh, but they were a huge upgrade in size and uh, their ability to play inside. And so uh, LJ Bryan, 6'9", uh, came in at 270, and now he's down to about 250. Is a very good rebounder. And then uh, Tajon Claude, 6'8", 240, freshman, uh, who's going to play a lot as a freshman, has a chance to be the best rebounder I've coached. And, and I've coached some really good ones dating back to the Dewan Moreros and, and uh, Trashad Williams and those guys. And he has all the, the ability to rebound that those guys did, but at 6'8", 240. And, so, um, and then we've just really focused on it as a team. You know, the very first workout that we had in the summer, whether it was an individual workout with three, four guys or a team, we've worked on rebounding on both sides of the ball every day. And we, we said that was going to be our identity. If we were going to get beat this year, it wasn't going to be because we're going to get beat on the glass. And so uh, we've really made that a point of emphasis. We've really worked on that. We've really drilled it. And uh, we're going to have to be better in that area than we were last year because it cost us some games. And we were. We were at the bottom of the league. And that's not where we're going to be this year. With the change in, you know, upgrading in size in a lot of positions, will that change your your style of play that that you know that we've seen over the past few years? It will. We're going to have a little more length. Where you know, obviously, like I said, we'll have more size inside with Ty and LJ. So you'll have a real post presence, and so you'll have a couple guys that you can really throw the ball into. Uh, both of them can score the ball, and both of them really pass it to be as, as, as big and physical as they are. It helps with your defense. You know, you're not going to have to scheme as much. You're not going to have to do as much digging and doubling in the post against some of the big post players that are in our league, which allows you to be a little more aggressive on the perimeter with your other guys. And so um, I think overall our depth, our length, and then our depth are going to be two areas that allow us to, to be more aggressive defensively, allow us to create more turnovers, generate more offense off of our defense, and then just keep our guys fresh, you know, and having the ability to go to your bench and, and put some guys in there that we haven't been able to do. You know, we've played probably seven guys the past couple years, and it's really hard to play aggressively when you've got multiple guys playing 30, 35 minutes a game. And so I think going down on some minutes up in intensity and, and with the numbers will help with that. With a more defined point guard role in juice, how much do you think that helps um, a guy like Jordan Walker, who's just athleticism is out of this world and his ability to cut? And, and do you think it really, you know, ups his game? For sure, for sure. I mean, I think he's going to up the level of everybody. He just makes everyone around him better. He's a very selfless player, um, and, and he impacts the game without having to score. He can score, um, and, and he will do that for us as well, and talking about juice. Um, but he's going to make all those other guys better. And the effect is on a, on a Jordan Walker, for example. Now he can uh, really settle in into that scoring role for us that we need him to do and not have to waver back and forth between being a scorer's mentality and a facilitator's mentality as much as he's had to do the past couple years. And I think on, right on down the line, I think, um, you know, James will be the beneficiary, Jimon, uh, Davon Cooper. All those guys are going to be the beneficiary of having played with someone like Juice.